Hi everybody and welcome to the stream. We are going to talk yet again about testing and this time we are going to take a look at uh, the source code of the parallel testing in PEST. It's an impressive feature. It has been coded up by Luke Downing. We have him as a guest and I'll bring him up in a minute. I want to give you a little news flash for some people that might have not seen it. We have released our testing Laravel course. In this course, you'll learn how to test your Laravel app from scratch. We'll show you some advanced techniques that we'll also use in uh, our projects at Spasi. And we've recorded this entire course twice both for PEST and for PHP unit. So if you want to get into PEST, this is like the best. I, I also think the only course uh, that uh, gets you that info. Uh, you can visit the course at testinglaravel.com. So yeah, this was the required plug, but let me bring on our guest and uh, turn his volume, volume uh, actually on. And here we have Luke. Hi Luke, how are you doing? Hey, Frank. Good, thank you. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Had a nice working day. It was a very sunny day in Belgium. We don't get a lot of those, so I worked outside the whole day, so th that was quite fun. Uh, how was it for oh, you? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really have the capacity to work outside, so it's just been a bit of a sauna in here. Yeah. Uh, so I've gone through three or four t-shirts, but other than that, it's been a good day. Okay, that's good. You uh, <laughs> are at a at a new job, right? Uh, not yet. Uh, ah, I'm starting okay. next next month. So, ah, yeah. yeah, next month. Ah, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that then. This time we will talk about parallel testing. So I'm yeah. right by saying that you tackled this feature, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, for the for the most part, um, help from a few other people. Um, certainly uh, on, on the testing side of things making sure it actually worked but um, Adrian as well who I think is in the yeah he's, he's in the audience yeah uh, helped out with it as well so yeah it's, uh, it, it was quite a beast but here we have it <laughs> yeah for for me when I uh, started toying around with best and actually considering it for our projects that was like the one missing feature um, it, it's not really like um, per se required because parallel testing in Laravel hasn't been around this long. But once you get uh, used to the speed of parallel testing, you don't want to give that up anymore. You know, our, yeah. our, our yeah. big applications, the test suite runs in, in, in five minutes if it's not in parallel and in under a minute when it's in parallel. And yeah, that's just too good. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. It's it's when you when you get a big test suite and you've you you've got five hundred or thousand or more tests and you're waiting, you know, yeah, ten minutes for continuous integration to pass or whatever. It becomes more and more required, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. Okay, so you're ready to just guide us a little bit through the code. I haven't seen anything of the code. Uh, I bet most people in the audience uh, also haven't seen it. So um, be be easy on us. <laughs> yeah, no, no, let's, let's, let's step through. Okay. Uh, piece by piece. Let me and share. stop me at any point. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, people can see your screen. I can see it too. So take it away, Luke. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, just let me know if things aren't quite big enough or anything, but I'm going to assume they are. Yeah, for me it's um, fine. If uh, for people it's uh, too uh, too small, I'll ch just see it in the chat. So go ahead. Awesome. Do, do you want me to comment a little bit and ask questions, or do you want me to, to uh, wait until later? Yeah, sure. Sure, uh, comment, come on, comment and discuss as and when. Okay, cool. Free and easy. Yeah, that's what I um, like also. So, um, obviously you can run parallel once everything's installed using the standard vendor bin past dash dash parallel command. Um, now the vendor bin past, <laughs> frameworks abstract all of this away from us, right? But when you run vendor bin past, you're actually asking past to execute a PHP file. Mm -hmm. And that PHP file lives in the past directory. So many of you will know this, but some of you won't. Um, it lives in the pest directory inside your vendor folder inside the bin pest file. So when you run 
uh, vendor bin pest dash dash parallel, you're actually executing this file here. Um, and this is what pest executes as well when you're doing standard pest when you're not in parallel. So if we scroll down in this file a bit, and, and Nuno went into more detail on this file in his pest internals uh, yeah, video stream. stream with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to skip over the main parts, but here, here's the the most important bit. So we check if we have a dash dash parallel option or a dash p. So there's a little tip. If you didn't already know, you can use dash p instead of the long form dash dash parallel, and you'll execute in parallel as if you'd typed out dash dash parallel. Yeah. Uh, so we basically check if we've asked for that option. And we're also going to check if the parallel command exists. So pest parallel at the moment is part of a separate plugin. It's maintained separately. At some point in the future, it will probably be brought in house under uh, the standard pest install. But for the moment, it's separate. So if you've asked for that, but the class doesn't exist, we basically just write a message out saying that you need yeah. to install the, the, the pest pa uh, parallel plugin. And up until now, everything is framework agnostic, right? There is nothing Laravel specific here. Yeah? Nothing Laravel specific, yeah. Um, in fact, the Laravel specific stuff is quite deep uh, inside Pest Parallel. So okay. uh, when we jump into that, you'll, you'll kind of see where we have to hook in and work out whether we're, we're in Laravel or not. God, God. Um, one so, one uh, little one yeah. little tidbit that I already see what I like, which I've learned all uh, uh, just recently, is that uh, you can use the um, uh, the command failure and command success um, statics. Yeah. Uh, I used yeah. to write uh, zero and minus one and one, and this is so much better to use those. They're much more descriptive. Definitely, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, it always confused me when you were supposed to return something inside a custom artisan command. Mm -hmm. I never understood what you were supposed to return, and it, I use these. It just makes it a lot easier, especially if it's a, a newer developer coming into uh, yeah into the code. Yeah, indeed. I always think like zero is like the the a failure code, like zero results. Yeah. This doesn't work, but it's actually the 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 success result and yeah command success is just much much better all right sorry for interrupting yeah. you luke <laughs> no not not at all yeah that's a great point um so on line 61 here we then obviously check this boolean again boolean again and this is where parallel comes into play so if you've asked to run in parallel then we're going to choose the command from the parallel plugin rather than the standard pass command yeah and then we return the result of running that command so from this point out, we leave pest and we go into the pest plugin parallel. <clears throat> and in source here, here is the command. So this is quite a simple little class. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing is, uh, it d this does three things. The main thing is that it actually is going to take care of the arguments that you've requested. So, um, because of how parallel works, we need to make sure that the arguments are sorted and that they're going to format correctly with Paratest. Now, Paratest is a parallel framework that is used uh, under the hood of Laravel parallel testing. And we use it with PEST as well. We had to perform some workarounds for certain things, which is why there has to be a, a parallel plugin in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to just change a few arguments and, and sort things out. So that's what this does here. Yeah. We then grab the pest test suite, and we're just using that to be able to find out where we're actually working from. And then this para test command application factory method is actually part of para test. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so th this final command is actually running the para test built in runner. And again, we'll go into the tweaks we've had to make to that in, in just a moment. But okay. just starting with this, um, this actually uses a plugin system. So Pest ships with a, a really great plugin system. Anything can be a plugin. But a plugin can actually define that it does extra things. It can define that it is able to hook into various parts of the Pest ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And when we say handle arguments, 
And if I move over here, you'll see that this is actually back in PEST. Yeah. What this is going to do is it's going to get all the plugins and it checks that the plugin implements this handles argument interface. Yeah. And if it does, then it's going to basically allow that plugin to edit the arguments that you've passed it. Yeah. So this is really useful. That's and nice. in fact, if yeah, definitely. If we come back to this, the plugin T that we we register PEST plugin parallel as a plugin. Here's the plugin class. Mm -hmm. You can see that we implement this handles arguments interface. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to do something uh, with it. Exactly. We're going to change the arguments as they come in. Um, so it's a little bit of like a, a meta call, like the command is calling this hook and then the plugin is also editing the arguments passed into the command. Got it. <clears throat> um, so first of all, we actually check that the user has asked for parallel. And if we if we go down a little bit, you'll see that that's more or less identical to the check we were doing in the vendor bin pest file. Yeah, yeah. just uh, take a look if an argument is parallel or... Uh, dash B, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, and then basically, uh, I'm going to skip over this bit for now. And we're going to come back to it because this requires an understanding of how uh, parallel processing works. And when we come back to that, that will make more sense. Okay. But basically, if they if they don't want parallel, we're just going to return the standard arguments. We don't change anything. Got it. If they do want parallel. First thing we have to do is we have we have to ask PEST to load all of the the test structure. We need all of that in place, ready for informing Paratest about all of the tests it needs to run. So this load structure in is basically an internal PEST call that looks through your test folders and loads all the correct files. Okay, so it's it, does this convert like all the PEST tests to PHP unit tests? Is that also uh, being done there? Is that part of the preparation? Yes, in 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 a way. So once you've once you've done this, all of the tests will be prepped and ready for the standard PHP unit runner to be able to take over. Got it. So this happens in a standard in a standard pest call as well in the pest command rather than the parallel command. Yeah. This same line of code happens. Yeah. Got it. Uh, you. You'll see up here we have this handlers array. And here you can see that we're just reducing over the handlers array. So basically we're we're going through and we're allowing each of these handlers to have an effect on the arguments that have been passed in. Yeah. So taking these handlers one at a time, the first is parallel. And this is uh, got this nice little trait on it called manager's arguments. It basically just abstracts away uh, some of the work around having to work with the arguments array. Yeah, so you can just do unset argument and you don't see, care about the string or, or sorry. array. Yeah. Oh, did uh... exactly. We've not got to like split an array or splice. <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, so here, all we're doing is we're removing any reference to parallel. So those arguments that were set earlier, we need to remove them because a PHP unit which is still going to be run, will not understand dash dash parallel or dash p. So we have to get rid of them. What we do is we also tell, um, we're going to inform Paratest that we want to use our local PEST parallel plugin runner rather than the standard runner that ships with Paratest. Okay. And we'll, we'll dive into that code a little more in a moment, but I'll just briefly jump over the, uh, the the other handlers. Okay. Uh, the next hand handler is this Laravel one. So this is fairly simple. We're going to check if we're actually in a Laravel application. And if you're wondering how we do that, um, that's literally just checking that the HTTP kernel class exists. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that the parallel runner class exists. Um. The reason it's quite important to check for app HTTP kernel rather than just, um, I don't know, checking for something in Illuminate framework, for example, mm -hmm. or Illuminate support, is that that doesn't tell you you're in a Laravel application. It tells you that Laravel has been required as a dependency. Oh, yeah, okay. Whereas this 
shows that we've actually got the Laravel framework in place. Okay, so, I didn't uh, know that. Uh... Yeah, well, like if, if you've got a package and you've required Illuminate support, then um, like this class here could still exist. Yeah. So it's not enough just to check for, for that. You, you need to, but if you want it only to run, if you're in a Laravel application rather than testing in a Laravel package, for example, yeah. then something like this check will, will make sure that happens. Yeah. yeah, that's something from the Laravel skeleton and not from the framework. Uh, that's basically exactly. what you're doing there, right? Oh, look, now that, yeah. now that, uh, uh, that I'm, I'm talking here, would you mind if I uh, put on a little bit of background music? I can, Not at all. Yeah. I can do Jazz that. It up. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's do this. I always forget that I can do this. Let me uh, make it a little bit <laughs> less loud. Like that. Just a little bit for, right. the, for the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Very nice. All okay. right. Um, this here is... I, I want to come back to this. I'm not going to discuss this now. So if we get a chance later, just remind me and I'll, I'll come back to this. Okay. Um, and this too, you see that we're unsetting and, and setting a new runner. So that overrides the thing that we just did in the in the parallel argument handler. Um, but we'll come back to why that's required a little bit later on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the very last argument handler in that array is this colors one. And all we're doing here is removing colors. And then if you've asked for colors in a different format, we add it back in again. So that's just because you can pass colors in uh, a variety of different ways, but Paratest only actually likes it in one, one specific format. So that's why we do that. Yeah. Okay. So back to the command. The command is going to run and it's going to execute standard Paratest functionality. The problem is that Paratest does not load pest tests. It does not know about pests. It has no idea how to uh, build pest tests and how to split those pest tests up in a way that can be um, divided across multiple processes. Okay. So we actually have to do some some uh, magic to make that work. So if I go to the composer.json file, you can see in the autoload. So autoload is how all of our uh, classes are loaded into the application without us having to manually call use or require once or include once. Um, you see that we have our standard PSR4, which is what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Then we have this that, you, that some viewers might not be as familiar with, exclude from class map. And this is basically going to say, look, when you come across this particular namespace, mm -hmm. don't actually include it in the files. Don't use that file. So. You can see when it comes across uh, this base runner, nothing's going to happen. And when it comes across this runner worker, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then what we say is, I actually want you to include these particular files. So you might have used files before for like a helper.php file, mm -hmm. where you've got a, a bunch of helper functions. You can include just standard uh, files with uh, complete classes in them. And the first one we're going to, uh, sorry, Frank. Yeah. yeah, why are you, are you doing this? Is this just to overwrite the the other, the Paratest classes? Exactly, yeah. So the, okay. the Paratest classes are uh, quite locked down, which is fine. That's the choice that every package maintainer gets to make. We're yeah. quite used to things being open in the Laravel community because Laravel uh, doesn't use final classes. It's very open, nothing's marked as internal. You can pretty much override everything. Yeah. But that is a lot of maintenance work, especially if it's just a team of one. Yeah. So a lot of uh, packages that are used by um, a large number of people but have a small maintenance base will choose to use uh, final classes and lock things down, which stops us in certain cases being able to add the functionality required. Yeah. And this is just a technique to just, yeah, uh, overwrite the final, just uh, copy the, the source code in another file, make sure that that one is auto loaded and there you go. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I, I actually, uh, I've documented exactly what's changed in these files. 
So I will show you first in the runner worker because that's the kind of the next step in the process. So af after Paratest executes that command, or after we tell Paratest to execute the command, it's going to come down to this file here. You can see we actually still use final, but we've just made a few tweaks to the class. Okay. So the first thing is in Paratest, the process property is private. Now we need access to that elsewhere in the parallel plugin, so we make it public. So you can see this here used to be private, but is now public. Okay. Um, in the constructor, we've added an arg editor closure, and that allows us to hook in in the pest runner and make some changes to the arguments. So here's the new arg editor, which didn't doesn't exist in the base uh, runner worker. And you can see we make use of that just here to pass in the default arguments and receive new arguments out. Yeah. So so you're, you've created is, a hook really uh, to be used exactly, elsewhere. That's exa yeah. That's exa exactly what it is. And the last change is that we have this process environment handler and that allows us to add additional environment tokens. But let me explain what that actually means. The biggest reason why this is actually such a problem, and again, this is nothing against Paratest. Do whatever you need to do to make what you're building work. But a lot of what actually takes place in this class takes place in the constructor. And that makes it quite difficult to edit in real time. So in the constructor, he already goes ahead, but the maintainer of this package, how it's been built, it already goes ahead and fires off the symphony process yeah so so that's why we're not able to kind of go and edit things and change them uh, later on we have to use this uh, class override yeah yeah Got um, it. but to explain what's going on here this is all standard stuff that paratest is doing it's finding php so in order to execute a php command inside php you need to know where php actually is so there's this useful class that lets that lets us do that um this is basically just checking if there's an, another php uh, runner available mm -hmm. so we don't need to worry about that going down here you can see we have the first set of arguments that are going to be passed to our our command our sim command our sim command mm -hmm. um and I'm going, to, I'm going to skip over that because, again, it's not essential for how PEST is actually running parallel. The first thing we actually are interested in here is this arg editor. So what I'm going to do, hopefully this will work for me. I can find usages of this class. Here we go. So in the PEST runner worker, uh, which is just in here. So in the pest runner worker, and let me close down some of this to make it a bit easier. Yeah. You can see that we build up this runner worker and here's the function with the arg. When we said we pass in a closure that is allowed to edit arguments, here's the function that actually does that. Yeah. So if you're wondering what, what this actually is, uh, this is uh, what we request uh Pest, or sorry, this is what we request Paratest to use to run. Yeah. And so Paratest is gonna is gonna call this class here. It's gonna build up the runner worker, pass this arg editor, and taking a look at this function, we can kind of get an insight into how we actually need to do things. So uh, the first thing is note that we find the index of PHP unit, and we're going to replace it with the pest binary. So let, let me try let me try and explain how paratest is going to work paratest works by building up a an array of symphony process classes and you can think of a process class if you've not used one before as a console a symphony console component or even something that's built on top of that for example is an artisan command mm -hmm. so you can think of it as an artisan command without a user interface and the cool thing about it is it runs in its own separate um, process it runs in isolation 
So automatically that provides us with multi-threading. It provides us with the ability to execute multiple processes side by side. Got it. Yeah. So, so you're so just actually... you're just executing commands uh, at the same time, right? And not and those exactly. commands don't wait on each other. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. So so what it's actually doing under the hood when it executes as a, a command is it's actually calling PHP units standard command. It's calling vendor bin PHP unit, but yeah. then it's passing in a filter. And the filter is one of your test classes. Yeah. And it will do that for every single test class. But if you imagine how that's working, that's basically a separate process for every single test class, which is what allows it to run side, all of those tests to run side by side. And that's quite quite greatly simplified, but that's how it, that's it's how easiest it to picture it that way. I, I, I do imagine a couple of problems, like for instance, uh, if you want to migrate a database or something, you only want to do that once and not in in all your commands uh, over yeah. and over again. So there must be some magic there to only migrate once, even if you use multiple databases, I guess. But maybe that's something to discuss also later. Eh? Yeah, well, that's actually... That's actually a really complex topic, and it's something that Nuno and, and the team at Laravel worked incredibly hard on to get Laravel parallel testing to work, mm -hmm. like seamlessly. Um, so I will talk about that later from the perspective of getting this to work with Laravel, because it's that that actually opens up the possibility of having support for databases. Yeah, okay. Now we keep in mind PHP, just no frameworks, no database, just Let's run things concurrently. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously, uh, by default, pest is uh, paratest. Sorry, is going to run PHP unit, not pest. And we need to kind of get in the way and say, no, I, I need you to run pest instead. So we find, we literally go and look at these arguments, and we find the index where PHP unit is declared. Okay. And then we replace that index with the pass binary instead yeah so if you imagine how this reads it would read something like this right it would say something like vendor bin um php, PHP unit. unit yeah yeah and then there'd be another there might be some more arguments like i don't know tests uh example pest up php right which yeah. is the, the filter for php unit to run after this has fired, this is going to actually ring, read vendor bin pest. Yeah, got it. Right. So that's that's what that's doing. We, we're just replacing PHP unit with pest. Um, the other thing is that by default, Paratest is going to use this null PHP unit printer. So again, unless you've done a lot of source diving on PHP unit, the printer might not make sense. But the printer is basically how you see results of your tests in the console. Mm -hmm. um, now, the null PHP unit printer is part of Paratest, and you can see... It doesn't that it does really do a little. lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which makes sense, because um, how Paratest actually outputs results is by saving a JUnit logs to a file and then reading the file after the test was executed. Um, but we don't want to do that because Pest has beautiful out output to boot, and we mm -hmm. want to use that beautiful console output to be able to show you all of the cool things. So what we do instead is we find again that printer index, and we're going to replace it with our printer. Yeah. So you can see uh, here's the collision printer, and if you don't know, that's what Pest uses to actually print its results. So that is the full argument editing of this runner worker got it i hope that makes sense anything anything at this stage that no, I need to clear up no i think the the base parts are uh, are are clear so we are going to test if we are going to run in parallel mode uh, then we're going to give the plugins the chance to um, reorder arguments and change arguments and we're going to pass 
that to um, to power test. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so coming back here, here you can see the process. So remember earlier I was talking about how a process is is like a console or a artisan command class without yes. the interface. Mm -hmm. Well, at the end of it all, here are the edited arguments where we've changed what's going to be run. So imagine this is actually going to look something like this, right? If we were to write this out and hard code it, it looks something like this. So PHP, that's the the path to the PHP executable. Yeah. Okay. The next argument is going to be vendor bin pest. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next argument is going to be the separated test case. So this is how it knows or how we inform pest which individual file this process should run. So something like tests example test.php. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there might be some other arguments in there. Um, so you might have something like, I don't know, stop on uh, failure, is it? Or stop on error? Yeah. Stop on failure, I so think. Other... Or they both exist, oh. I think, actually, yeah. So any other argument, basically, which you've tagged on and are supported uh, will also be passed through in in this args array. And the process is basically going to execute that PHP script. So it will go ahead and, and execute just that single test. Yeah. Um, the only other thing we do is we have this... So you can, you can pass... It, uh, environment variables. If you used um, your .m file mm -hmm. in Laravel, mm -hmm. what that's actually doing under the hood, for those who, who don't know, is PHP already has environment variables. It's where you have dollar underscore server, for example. So anything in dollar underscore server will be loaded by the environment. Mm -hmm. And you can pass that as a third parameter to a Symfony process. So we actually have this process environment handler class where we again do a few edits. So in this case, we tell collision that it should always support color output because by default collision is going to only provide colors if you've got a user interface. And we've already said that the process doesn't have a user interface. Mm -hmm. And then you might recall this one, uh, Frake, from the other day. Yep. Is <laughs> if we're in Laravel, we, we have to be able to say um, you are using Laravel parallel testing because Laravel relies on that to do all of the database setup and other such things. So that's what we're doing in this in this class here. Yeah, got it. So the one okay. one question about this uh, that uh, mm -hmm. collision printer is that also one of the arguments that is being passed to the command, or is that something um, something that is configured outside of that? Uh, no, I I can find it. I just need to remember where. Uh, who I could do. There we go. This was it. Look. So see here where we edited the arguments. We removed the ah, null yeah. PHP unit printer, and we set the the printer. Okay. And that so looks it's... something like. Uh, this is you, you can actually already do this in in you run this like in the um, as a, a as a thingy I'm trying to think what the word, what the word is now but yeah. as like a command yeah on the console yeah it yeah, would look yeah. something like that yeah it wouldn't look like it look you know what I'm saying got it um, so that that's is... where it's, that's where it's taking place so that's also one of the arguments that's being passed to the command then right yeah yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, it, it all makes sense. Okay, so here is our localized runner. Um, and just to go back to where that actually happens, in fact, the easiest way will be to find usages here, won't it? So you see, when we did the argument editing earlier, we mm -hmm. set this class as the runner to use. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's why this runner here is going to be executed. So this is the first time that that Paratest is actually going to allow us to slot in without having to override things at a higher level <laughs> in Composer and force things. Um, so, so this is uh, basically kind of where everything takes place. 
So you see, we we set a test suite to test suite get instance, which mm -hmm. is a bit. Uh, think of this as a, like a singleton in a Laravel container. So mm -hmm. in Laravel, you can create a singleton using this app singleton, mm -hmm. and Pest has like a mini container that allows it to bind singletons. One Good. of the singletons it binds is the test suite. Yeah. And you, you can get an instance of that test suite from anywhere with test suite get instance. Yeah. And that test suite class, it's part of PEST itself. And it contains probably yeah, um, yeah all of the uh, converted tests. So the tests in PHP unit form. Yeah, it's, it's the thing that's responsible for um, for the conversions. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so this get pass test here, you, you can see if you've used PHP Storm, you'll see this is an override. So you might be thinking, why is there an override of get pass tests in the base runner, which is Paratest? And mm -hmm. if you look here, you'll see that we're again doing that magic from earlier. Mm -hmm. And we're just overriding the, the base runner that comes with Paratest. So you can you can see here exactly what we do. We abstract, we add an abstract method responsible for finding and returning pest tests. So that's exactly what's going on there. Okay. Um, we also, yep. so here's another important thing, right? Remember earlier I said about setting our own printer? Yeah. Well, we want to use that printer, but we have to do that manually because, again, a Symfony process doesn't have a user interface. So we have to go about that in a different fashion, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Okay. But we also remove all references to the default printer so that you don't get the dot, 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 s, dot, dot, f, dot, dot, e output that Paratest provides. Yeah, got it. <clears throat> so I I'm going to leave this here because I don't think that this stream is particularly interested in, in coverage and logging that. And so I'm going to come back to the the runner, which extends yeah. this space. I think you've already got enough to talk about without the coverage. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so here's what's going to happen. Look, and this is a bit backwards. Thank goodness for coll uh, for collections in Laravel. <laughs> but when we're not using collections, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the test suite, which is the past test suite, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to say, give me every test inside that test suite and give me all of the file names. Mm -hmm. So inside here, this would basically be returning these file names here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would actually return these ones as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to map over those file names. Mm -hmm. Because these file names can actually appear more than once because it's actually once per test. So what you'll actually, let, let's imagine we have a test, a test case in PEST with two tests in it so a test file with two tests in it mm -hmm. array count values is going to reduce all of the instances so that you have a key which would be the name of the file let's say tests example test and also the number of times that it was found which is the number of tests in that file so let's say it's two oh, yeah. in this example that's actually like that yeah so we end up with an array, which looks a little bit like this, but you obviously have one More. of these for every single file. Yeah. Okay. That might have, let's say that's got six tests in it, mm -hmm. which is actually super useful because this gives us like all of the information about how many tests are in each test file. Mm -hmm. And that's like incredibly useful information to have. <laughs> um, so we get those occurrences, we map over them, and we're going to create this executable pest test. Mm -hmm. So an executable pest test, if I quickly dive into there, it extends executable test, which is part of Paratest. Mm -hmm. And this is basically in charge of telling Paratest little bits of information about the how, how to run that test. So okay. for example, how many tests are in this file is, is one example of what it 
what it uh, documents. So this is something that Paratest needs to know uh, in order to run things in parallel. I wonder why um, Paratest needs to know that and not... I. I, I, I wonder why having like the total number of tests is not enough. Why should it have like the number of tests within a file? Is there something special at the file level that it's doing? Yeah, so if you think about um, if you think about it, when you run a test in series, you can infer all of the information about that test suite up front because you have every piece of information. Oh yeah, yeah. But you, when you're running the test, sorry. Yeah, probably, probably you say that probably because you can if uh, you can infer everything about the test because then you have like the setup methods probably, and then you know some bits that you need to know to run the tests, right? Is it like that? Yeah, and it's only it's only one place as well, so you know that everything is going to run through a single a single process. Yeah, but in parallel you've got to remember that we're going to call the vendor bin pest command separately on every single test file. Mm -hmm. So pest will only know when pe when the pest command is run in isolation, it will only know about that one test file that it was asked to execute. Mm -hmm. And that means that Paratest has no way to be able to say um, this is how many tests will run. Yeah, um, and it needs that kind of information for coverage and all sorts. So, yeah, what we what we do here is we say, well, I can tell you how many tests are going to run. The reason we can tell it how many tests are going to run is exactly because of how array count values works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a pretty nifty function. I haven't used that before. Uh, I guess you don't yeah, need it too I, often, but for this use case, it's no. kind of perfect. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, absolutely. So we we get these pest tests, and if you're wondering where this is, then where we override this in the base runner, because this is quite important. If I just find uh, pest tests, here we are. So when we load, this suite loader is built into Paratest, and this was like the big hurdle with, with making pest parallel, is that the suite loader only loads PHP unit tests. Mm -hmm. It's a custom setup. It 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 is built to work with Paratest or for Paratest. It's it's completely custom, and it only knows how to load in PHP unit tests. Mm -hmm. So when the loader load method happens after this has taken place, we still only have PHP unit tests, and we need to say, look, I. I need pass tests to load as well. So that's exactly what's happening here. You can see in this little call here, it loads the PHP unit me uh, the PHP unit tests, mm -hmm. and then we merge in our pass tests that we just loaded in that other function that we've just been looking for. Yeah, yeah. And those so this was kind of like the magic. And those pass tests that are already the convert tests, right? Yes, exactly. Or, well, these pest tests are the executable. Um, I need to go back up to the Parrot test runner. These pest tests are all executable pest tests. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So it's the information that will be needed by Parrot test yeah. to inform it how to run the, the, the pest test. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Um, so. That, that this was kind of like the magic line that made things start to work <laughs> when building this functionality out. Um, this was kind of where things started turning green, uh, which was great. <laughs> that must have been a pretty good um, feeling, yeah. That was it. Was a pretty good feeling, yeah. It was. Uh, it was a fist pump for sure. <laughs> um, so do run is when things actually start happening. Um, you. You might start seeing things that are familiar here. So we start a timer. Timer is something that comes with PHP unit. It's just a way to record how much time has elapsed. Mm -hmm. um, so no doubt, you know, we've all created little things like that on other projects. Mm -hmm. This is just PHP units version. And then we're going to write out a line to the output, which is the console. 
And we're going to basically say, look, you're running PEST in parallel using um, X number of processors. So you can see that work if I fire this off again and we go to the top of this. Here we are. Yeah. Um, so that's where we are in the process at this point, right? Yeah. We've, we've written that line. If you're wondering what the little two spaces are here, um, this is just so we, we can fall in line with how PEST formats test cases. That's what makes PEST output best output you know all the little details are in order yeah <laughs> absolutely it's like it's 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 quite crazy how much detail uh nuno is has put into all of the formatting and making it look nice mm -hmm. um, so it's good that we could follow that yeah indeed um then we call create workers so this is where everything actually starts to happen you, you can see that uh it's a little crazy but don't worry it's it's fairly straightforward okay we basically say, create an array of one to however many processors you've requested. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know, when you run in parallel, you can say processors equals, let's say 12. And if I go back to the top here, you can see it uses 12 processors. If you don't specify a process option manually, it will just use the number of cores available on your CPU. Got it. So you're rocking an eight core beast there. <laughs> yes, M M1 all the way. Um, so this will basically look something like like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have eight eight tokens available. Yeah. So what's what it's then going to do is it's going to look at if you remember we have on the class a pending array which contains all of those executable pest tests. Mm -hmm. So it's going to say look while there is something running and mm -hmm. while there are still pending tests then fill the run queue it sleeps for a few microseconds between each one so that things don't get out of hand mm -hmm. um, and also so that it's, it's not doing work all the time when it doesn't need to mm -hmm. um, and it's going to say um, I want to go into fill run queue here it's going to say um grab me the the latest or the next pending test mm -hmm. and create a new pest runner worker so this is this class here mm -hmm. create a new pest runner worker pass this console instance so that pest is able to to continue to update the console output as things yeah. happen yeah pass it the executable test pass it the options and pass it the token so the token is the thing that makes it unique across processors and it's the magic that will allow laravel for example to set up databases in your behalf so that your databases don't clash when running in parallel yeah so this is what is being used maybe as a as a suffix to your testing name and other things that exactly, yeah. you should set up uh, separately yeah <laughs> but it might look like my database one my database two three yeah. In this case, if we were running with eight processors, the maximum it would get to is eight. Yeah. But if we did twelve processors, it might it might look like that. Got it. Um. And then it's going to say, right, um, get me the process or the pest runner worker and and call the run method on. So, ju I'm just going to go back here because I, I want to finish this method off before we go into another class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But once it's filled the run queue, so you imagine now, there if I've got eight processors running, there are now going to be eight items in that run queue. Yeah. It's going to sleep for a second, and then it's going to say, okay, find out if any of the tests have been completed. Yeah. So basically, work out which of these tests have actually finished running. So which of the processors have finished running. Yeah. And any tests that have finished running, we're going to actually basically unset the the running state at that token. Yeah. Which is going to allow this to run again, and when it fills the run queue, that token will be filled up by a new test. Got it. Yeah. So this is basically okay. like a nice little in-memory queuing, uh, but but uh, not like a, a, a FIFO thing, but like a slots thing and just taking a look which slots is available. Okay, I'm going to get myself in here when it's free. 
exactly exactly that's that's yeah. exactly how it's working um and this is actually this isn't anything that we like wrote specifically for pest this is basically a power test still yeah um just the the main edit is that we have to use this pest runner worker instead of using the standard uh the standard runner worker that comes with uh parrot test yeah go with okay um let's take a look inside pest runner worker at this point so you can see um i think the main thing here because we already covered this edit args the main thing here is that when the process is finished running we're going to call stop on this process mm -hmm. and that's going to retrieve the exit code so we were talking about this earlier you can have like command uh, success yeah or you could have command failure or it could be something completely different we're going to retrieve the exit code from the symphony um process right mm -hmm. And then we're going to handle output. And this is, we already said that the Symphony process doesn't have a user interface, which is true, it doesn't. But it still records the output that has been, that has been generated. And we're actually able to say, like, get output and receive that string to mm -hmm. do whatever we want with. So here we have this output handler, which is, again, part of uh, Paratest. We mm -hmm. get the output handler, we pass this output, which is the the console instance that you executed the command from. And then we ask it to, to handle it. So th th this is the... Uh, I'm about to show you this, but I, I just want to say before we go in here, just prepare yourself because... <laughs> okay, there be not dragons. Even, not, even, not even I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this was kind of the... The, uh, the the devil's lair of the whole project. Okay. So the <laughs> so the output handler is going to receive a a a load of strings that is basically pest output. So let's just go. Okay, well, let me go through here. Look. So it's going to receive output that looks like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like this because it's not actually run one of. It's not run all of this. Okay, it's not run everything here. It's it's just run one of these. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So one of these so, one uh, you mean like the whole block like all the tests in the file. Or you mean like one particular test? I, I mean it will run all the tests in let's say this one on here. It yeah. will run all the tests in here. Yeah. Um so I might actually be able to literally give you an example. I think I would just need to edit a few things. Okay. Uh, am I wrong in saying that? Oh, then. Bigger. Yeah. So okay. this is actually what the output looks like from the process. Yeah. Okay. Because if you if you managed to keep up with where we are so far, this is literally the command that has been run by Paratus. Yeah. So just and, in a separate process. And I guess that output class there, um, you're probably going to try to parse it to get things like <laughs> the amount of time there and how many tests are, are being run. Exactly. So, yeah. So, okay. so this is the piece we're interested in. We're not interested in this piece. The other thing is that we can have errors, right? So if the, mm -hmm. if a test has an error or a failure, we need to capture all of that information because that's useful. Yeah. And um, so, so here's where here's where the magic happens. We get this string. We're going to say, well, if it's empty, we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. If the result is that no tests have been executed, mm -hmm. then we're just going to return because pest doesn't actually uh, output anything. Like standard pest doesn't output anything, so mm -hmm. this shouldn't either. Okay. Um, then we do this. So we're going to attempt to pass. If it fails, we'll pretty much at this point always just write out what we receive because it, we don't know what it is, but it's probably useful. Yeah. So let's go to the <laughs> let's go to the standard uh, the standard output. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. So we're basically here finding 
all instances of, of new lines. Mm -hmm. Right? And the new lines are what we can use to sort of decipher where things are. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to grab uh, this block here. Mm -hmm. So this uh, this block here, and we're going to write that out to the to the console. Yeah. We then find the summary section. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the summary section, if you don't know, is this. Yeah. We find out where that starts. And this here is going to say, right, there, there is additional things to print, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to print them in this time. So get rid of the summary. I'm not interested in the summary because yeah. this will never be correct because you're, you're firing more than one test. Yeah, if you uh, would leave that, then every block would have like its own test in time, but there's no summary of the whole uh, execution of everything then, right? You, you would only exactly. get like That's partial right. results for each file, uh, yeah, which isn't very useful. Exactly. And the other thing is, so we have this block here, which is great, but if something went wrong and you have a failure, between this block and this summary, you'll mm -hmm. have the failure output. That's how PESS works. Yeah. We need to store that information to show the user once all the tests have finished running. Yeah. So what we do is we strip this we strip out the summary section by removing it here. Yeah. And then we basically if you look at this matches 011, you'll notice matches 011 here as well. Mm -hmm. So basically we're going from the end of this block here mm -hmm. all the way up to the start of this block here. Mhm. Mm so if there's anything in between here, we capture it and we store it in a static additional output variable mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah that makes sense so you're basically uh just waiting to output things and you're uh, keeping things ready to be displayed at a uh, at a later time yeah exactly yeah that's exactly it and um, I, my guess so, why do you put it like statically on on this class ah so this is because uh Again, every Symphony process is running separately, and we need to wait until everything has run, every single piece of content has run, and we have. We, this is not a singleton, right? Yeah. So we okay. aren't using the same instance every time. Yeah, got it. And this is like a way to just reach everything overarching all the instances. Uh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And we can we can shove all of the output in here. So if four different test files have failures, there'll be four items in this array. Yeah, got it. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure I can find a usages here. Here we go. So in the runner... Oh, oh did not like that, did it? There we go. In the runner, so this is back inside the source parrot test runner, when we complete or when paratest completes and that's when everything is completed right mm -hmm. it's going to call this function and you can literally see here we're going to go through that static array and we're going to output everything in that static array yeah just so everything point, that if you have just everything that we just got from all the tests yeah uh, yeah so if you have failures so th this isn't the top block because there's like the first initial um sorry this isn't this piece because this has already been outputted yeah uh, but it is every all the failures all of the diffs everything that gives you information about why something went wrong yeah They're that the... will be output at this point yeah 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 got it yeah i was wondering how you could could do that and this yeah just explains it because yeah, I was all already thinking, well, how do they do that? Are they buffering something uh, there in some dark magic? But it's just parsing <laughs> the output, just removing things and keeping them for later. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nothing, uh, well, nothing too magical. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little bit. <laughs> and then we call them, yeah, just, just a little bit, just, just enough to be passed. Um, 
Can we call this reset method? That literally is just um, setting this additional output variable back to an array mm -hmm. or like an empty array. And then we call print recap. So print the, the recap is this section here, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have that section because that that section came along with each individual test file mm -hmm. and we got rid of it. We got rid of it because we don't want this section repeated over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> so it literally is no use to us. Yeah. Now, luckily, we do have information, all the information about the test results from mm -hmm. Paratest. So we can manually print a recap. And you can see the comment here, right? This is basically a slightly tweaked version of the recap provided by Collision. We just alter it so that it understands Paratest. So if yeah. you were to go into the Collision source code, and find the bit that is printing this out, it will look very similar to this function here. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab everything that that uh, is a type of test, and then we, we ask Paratest, which is what these methods are, we ask Paratest for the number of tests that failed, that had warnings, that were skipped in the past. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can just ask Paratest for this. And what I said earlier, that you're going to parse the output and just try to sum it together. You don't actually need to do that because uh, Paratest uh, provides this information. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> much better than trying to read, read strings. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, Paratest uh, provides information through JUnit. So if you don't know what JUnit is, it's basically like a, a test logging format. Mm -hmm. um, and every test case that is run, so every time Paratest runs a process and completes that process, it's going to create a JUnit file. And then it reads that JUnit file. Paratest ships with a, uh, a JUnit parser. It mm -hmm. parses the JUnit file, and that JUnit file contains all of the information about the results of that test. Yeah. And do um, the these test failed and test with warnings uh, methods just parse those those files? Yes. On, on, so you can see here we say look get interpreter. So the interpreter is your J unit interpreter. Get oh, yeah. the total failures. Get the interpreter. Get the total errors. Okay. Yeah. So um, that that's what's actually happening. I, I think these were helper methods that I kind of created because I didn't want to have to write all this out in one giant function. But you can see like test passed is literally getting the interpreter, getting all of the tests and then subtracting failed warnings and skips. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's how interprets results, which is, yeah. So here we are. Print recap. Yeah. Um, so once we do that, we're going to loop over each type. We ask collision for the color for that particular type. So these test results, constants are actually part of collision yeah so we ask for the color that represents that type and then we're going to add to an array this fg equals if you haven't done much work in the console it's basically a way of formatting console output and then you can see quite familiar text that we're writing this tests colon space and mm -hmm. then dollar s which is the number of tests yeah. So that gives us, to come back to this here, that gives us this. Yeah. And then further down, we have time elapsed. So we're going to grab basically, uh, well, the time, elapsed, uh, time elapsed in seconds. And we're going to basically write that to the console, which is this here. Yeah. That is exactly and all that is happening <laughs> in... In, in in that particular piece of code. So a um, little question about that, that FG um, for formatting the, the output, that is Symfony that is uh, formatting that, right? That isn't some weird kind of bash thing. Symfony no, yeah. process will convert it to something bash, I guess. Exactly, yeah, yeah. that is that is Symfony. And there is there's FG, you can see we have options. There's also, so FG is foreground, BG is background. So yeah. FG will set the text color, BG will set the uh, the block color, which is how this works here. Yeah. Um, and so you can use that to, to kind of 
make things look nicer in yeah. the console. Yeah, thank God um, for Symphony Command this, and, this, and Symphony Console, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would not want to be working with this uh, <laughs> any deeper than Symphony. Um, but it, 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 this is the only real place where we have to do this kind of formatting because pretty much everything is taken care of by Pest and Collision. Like yeah. all of this formatting is taken care of for us. We just need to grab it and, and output it in the console. I, I really appreciate, Luke, that you've gone like the extra mile of of doing that, you know. I think it it could be easy to just say, oh yeah, let's just have a summary block underneath each file. People will like that. People will like details. But no, people like simple things. Just give me the total, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and I, I think it kind of hides the it hides the complexity and leaves you with something that feels basically like you've just run past. But yeah. It's, been, it's faster. Yeah. <laughs> much, uh, much that, faster. That was kind of the aim. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what Nuno was going for as well. When, when chatting with him, he's like, I just wanted, it should just feel and look like past. So yeah, I think we achieved that. Yeah. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, like, oh, I don't want to have to wait until all my, my tests have run to find out there was a problem. Well, two things. First of all, you will actually see the, in real time the the fail tags yeah. as it's going through. But I would just say, if you want things to, if you want the failure output immediately, then make sure to run it with stop on failure or stop on error. Yeah. You can add that to your PHP unit.xml file. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, and and I would just say that because it it's the same thing when you run Paratest. If you don't do that. In, in standard power test with PHP unit, it's just going to keep pushing those dots out and yeah. you're not going to get any useful output until the end of the entire thing anyway. So yeah, a little yeah, tip yeah. there, make sure you use those. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, we've covered, is... we've covered a lot, uh, Luke. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've done okay, I think. Uh, so just let, let, if there's anything... let, let me get this straight. So when uh we're running tests in parallel we're not actually running each test in parallel but we're running the files in parallel right yes so, uh, so if yeah. i would have like a long uh a test suite with only one file then those wouldn't uh, be run parallel right exactly yeah okay exactly just, um, okay. i think actually let me search i can just explain that a little bit further um, here we go. So you can see here, when it loads the pending tests for PHP unit, it checks if you've requested functional mode. So in Paratest, you can you can use dash F for functional mode. That's mm -hmm. not supported by Pest by Pest Parallel. This is only here because it it removes. Um, remember that this is basically a copy of an yeah, exact you, copy of the file. You don't want to change changed. too much there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we want to keep it nice and simple in case the file changes in the future. Yeah. Um, but you can see here, if you've requested functional mode, it's actually going to load each test method. Whereas if you've not requested functional mode, which is the default and what para uh, what Pest Parallel uses, it loads each suite, and that's what uh, Pest Test Get Pest Test is doing as well. Yeah. So it's loading on a file by file basis. It's not loading loading each test. And the pa the power test documentation actually sa says that at ninety nine percent of the time, and this is uh, it's not quote unquote, but basically ninety nine percent of the time, um, you don't want to run in functional because the overhead of spinning up a process for each test it's not worth will it. far exactly it will far outweigh any speed gains you get from running in parallel. Yeah, got it. So, so that's why uh, uh, we don't load pest tests test by test, but rather file by file. Yeah, and this is uh, th this was also something that I was wondering, like when I ran it for the first time and saw the output, how is it getting like all the tests underneath like the right file? It must be crazy to just coordinate that, but it's just very simple. Every file is just one single run, and you just get the output format it a little bit and that's it yeah pretty nice exactly and, yeah and the nice thing is that like the pest runner already supports like filtering based on a file so yeah w once you know how to 
uh, load all of the tests, which is what this is, then Pest already has all of the all of the groundwork done because yeah. you can just pass it that argument and it's going to run that test in isolation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, so the, the other thing I just want to cover, if we have time, yeah, sure, sure. We don't have a deadline. We inter how, well, how we interact with Laravel, because I think most people here will be Laravel developers or uh, use Laravel. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's important to kind of work out how that actually works. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually, if you've got Pest uh, and Pest Parallel installed in a Laravel application, you can run PHP Artisan test dash dash parallel. And it will it will use pass parallel rather than using PHP unit. Yeah. So so there's a little tip. But the challenge was that and, and fair dues, Nuno said, look, it should also work just the same if I run vendor bin pass dash dash parallel in yeah. Laravel. It should fire all of the Laravel hooks. Yeah. And this is a quite a challenge because um this is a completely separate command, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this command isn't part of Pest, it's part of uh, Laravel. Actually, interestingly, it's part of Collision, but mm -hmm. it's fired from Laravel. So how do we actually get in? How do we make this work without it seeming like the Laravel team is trying to uh, force people onto Pest and mm -hmm. take over the world and, uh, <laughs> and and make loads of people unhappy? So. <laughs> We have to be careful when, when or, we do things. Or happy, happen. Luca. You're doing like the negative well, road, but initially <laughs> unhappy, and then after like a couple of days, very happy. I would say. <laughs> I, I would be. I would be very happy. But uh, we have to be careful not to throw weight around. I guess. Yeah. 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 Indeed. Um, so how does it, how does it happen? So inside the Laravel argument handler, you'll see we're back here now, so we can focus on this. We set the Laravel Parallel Runner. So just before Parallel came out in Laravel 8.55, I contributed a little tiny tweak to Laravel mm -hmm. that basically allows us, when we run PHP Artisan Pest, uh, PHP Artisan Test dash dash Parallel, mm -hmm. to update the runner that gets used. Mm -hmm. So what we actually say is, look, in the Parallel Runner, I want you to resolve using this runner, which is a local version, rather than the wrapper runner, which is what Laravel uses by default. So this runner, by the way, is literally the one we, we looked through earlier. Yeah, yeah. So nothing special there. We're so basically La saying the past. That... So, so Laravel sorry, basically sorry. Has, has, yeah, so we have a little bit of a delay. I'm not trying to be rude and interrupt you, but no, no, the no. delay is a little bit... Uh... So I was I, trying... To, I, I, was... Assume that. <laughs> I was... Uh, uh, I was try to ask so uh, parallel runner resolve runner using that's basically laravel's hook of letting people use another runner uh when they need to right exactly yeah yeah i i guess pest yeah. is like the only one using this currently uh... yeah yeah th this literally was created um for for pest so we created yeah. this about a week before uh, pest parallel was released yeah. Um, we I had added it as a PR to the Laravel framework. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there's not been a need for it up to yet, but there was a need, and the need the need was fulfilled. Yeah. Um, I, so yeah. I I think I PR'd uh, or or somebody of my team PR'd similar things to get like some hooks to get like Flare running in Laravel to just switch out the uh, uh, the error uh, rendering. Uh, this feels like the same, like putting a little hook in there so you can just hook in it in an easy way without, um, yeah, hard coding pests or ignition or flare anywhere. Yeah, this, this is quite yeah. nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so yeah, so we're able to do that. The eagle-eyed might think, well, why do we do that? But then unset the runner and set the runner to illuminate testing parallel runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this is actually where all of the magic for Laravel Parallel, that's a phrase to say, isn't it? Laravel <laughs> Parallel testing happens. So let me see if I've got the, I think I'm pretty, I've probably got the framework uh, here somewhere. If not, I can open it. Let me just open it up. I hope I've not got anything. Uh... Nothing secret there. 
<laughs> Too confidential. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything about why I got the, the directory there, but once in screen sharing, uh, I showed like a finder uh, window and um, people noticed Hey, Frank has a torrent folder. I wonder what he has in there. Uh, <laughs> does he do illegal stuff? The torrent folder is, is gone now. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Let me do it this way. Um, what do we call it? Parallel runner. Here we go. So I'll show you here. So uh, the parallel runner is actually a wrapper. So note this uh, runner is over here. Mm -hmm. And this is basically the little thing that was added in V8.55 to Laravel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see we check if there is a runner resolver. And if there's not, then we return this new wrapper runner. Yeah. But if there is, which is exactly what's happening here. Yeah. Then it's going to use this instead. Yeah. So it's not the entire runner that is replaced, but just the the uh, subclass that yeah. Laravel is going to call upon. Yeah. And is, <laughs> and, 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 and is that a problem that it's that it's only the subclass? Uh, it's it's not. It's, well, it's how Laravel is actually able to do everything. So. Once Laravel has finished setting everything up and sorting the database issues that you might have out and other other little things, mm -hmm. um, it's then able to basically say, right now we can just let Paratest do whatever it wants. Yeah. So they and, and a wrap. Ra sorry, uh, sorry, Frank. Go, go ahead, go ahead. I'll uh, ask my question after this. As you say, the the wrapper runner is just part of Paratest. That's a Paratest class. If we look up uh, here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Paratest runners PHP unit wrapper run. Yeah. So literally all we're saying is that we want to use our own version. We don't want to use this one. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, now, if you're wondering how all of the database stuff works, that's actually uh, much more to do with Laravel than it is to do with Paratest or Pest Parallel or anything like that. Um, Laravel handles all of that for us and allows us to um just trying to find an example of where this would happen so i think in here call setup process callbacks and in, in honesty you know would know more about this than me because he wrote this part mm -hmm. um he, he, you know he wrote all this stuff for for parallel testing in laravel mm -hmm. uh, but this is where um it would go ahead and if say let's say you're using mysql for database testing rather than sqlite Mm -hmm. It will go ahead and create, let's say you're running in eight processes, it will create eight different databases. Yeah. If you're wondering why that needs to happen, by the way, because I've had a, I had a similar question in, in GitHub issues, um, but about files instead of databases. Mm -hmm. And like to us, it might seem like really obvious why, why this is a problem. But if you're new to parallel or how it works or why things would happen you might be scratching your head as to why all of a sudden it's causing a problem and it could cause you to kind of turn around and, <laughs> and walk away <laughs> before you've even really started imagine that you're testing that uh, you have five users in the users table and you're using the refresh database trait but the refresh database trait at the end of each test is going to clear the database. Mm -hmm. So it will remove any any entries in that database that you've created in that test. Yeah. Now in parallel, you've got two tests running at the same time. Let's say one test that seven users are added and the other test that five users are added. Well, if one test finishes slightly earlier than the other test, it's going to clear the database. And so that second test is then in, in a situation where it can never actually check the proper data has been added. Yeah, you, you just basically don't want to have like side effects from other tests inside of, of your tests. Uh, and it's not only databases, exactly. it's, it's everything that, um, yeah, has side effects like file systems and, and such. 
uh, that needs to be separated uh, also. But I think by default, Laravel uh, does MySQL or da databases. Uh, I guess also with SQLite. I don't know actually if it uses in memory or a file. What's yeah, so well, if it was a if it was file, I imagine it would have to do something. But if it's yeah. in memory, I think that's taken care of. Yeah, that's um, there is actually. I don't think it's in this class, but there's actually a piece of code in the Laravel parallel handling that literally checks if your database is SQLite or not. Yeah, I do wonder um, how. However, um, yeah, and this might be going a little bit out of scope of what you know, um, Luke is yeah when a migration takes place of a database um obviously we don't want to migrate the database for every every process but it should only happen like once right um or once per database that that we're creating uh i wonder how it, how it yeah. does know that like this is like the very first uh test that we're going to use uh I, in all honesty, I don't know. The only thing I might, I can't see anything. But the, I, I know that there's like a hook that is like before everything, everything. runs, yeah. and then there's before each test runs. Yeah. Um, and I also know that there's an option in Laravel testing, which is dash dash recreate databases, which is if you want to force the exactly what you've just said and you want the database to be completely new every single test yeah or every single test case I should say um so it's i by default i'm pretty sure that that laravel is handling that i've not looked into how it handles that i'm just trusting that laravel does it <laughs> um here so uh adrian uh, also says uh, something about it uh uh, there is a static property that holds the migration state. So there's, yeah, it has been taken care of, uh, and it uses, yeah, some kind of property that uses that static little trick to just go over all instances. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Th yeah. Thanks very much, Adrian. That's, uh, that's, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, what the, so the only other thing I'd, I'd say is because you, I guess this kind of shows a little bit, but it still doesn't answer the question as to how is there parity between these two commands? Mm -hmm. and, and the basic answer is that all PHP artisan test is really doing, or all that PHP artisan test dash dash parallel is really doing, is setting this runner to the parallel runner. Yeah. So and, they're, they're... Uh, this test isn't even, it's not even part of of Laravel, this 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 command isn't in the Laravel framework anywhere. It's in Collision. Yeah, yeah, and so it only handles a very little bit, and the same bit is also handled within uh, vendor bin pest, probably. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I I can tell you exactly which bit needs to be handled, and that is <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. process environment handler. Yeah. Laravel parallel <laughs> testing one. We, we discovered that uh, two days ago. Uh. <laughs> 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 we didn't do <need>, yeah <laughs> uh so that's that was like the missing bit of parity between the two commands but uh th th there is one other thing i want to add which is the uh, recreate databases option so currently you'd be able to recreate database with this but if you use the option here it would it would uh, error out yeah yeah um but but that will that will probably come in the next uh, minor release yeah um but yeah that that is kind of <laughs> The long and short, really, of, uh, <laughs> of, of of what's going on in the Pest parallel plugin. Any any other any questions or? Um, I think I have lots of little detail questions that I, I probably mm -hmm. um, um, am, I'm probably going to read the source code uh, again first and then ask you those questions off stream probably because we're already like one hour 30 in uh, yeah. you probably want to do something <laughs> with your evening uh, then then running through through this code but i think the the general gist uh, is is pretty clear to me now um and it certainly yeah, answers some questions that that i that i had like uh yeah 
uh, how is the uh, parallel testing on which level does it does it do that uh, how is the output uh, taken care of so all of the those bigger questions have certainly uh, have certainly been answered and uh, yeah uh, look i just love what uh, what you did here man i just supporting <laughs> I just supporting this. It's it's a major achievement, I would say. Uh, what was it hard for you to just get to know like parallel uh, of power test a little bit? It seems like a little bit heavy to get into. How was that for you? Yeah, um, I it was. I, <laughs> I've kind of I've used power test. I've used obviously Laravel parallel testing, but I was using power test in projects before Laravel introduced official support. Um, so I was familiar with the basics, but I'd never source dive para test. Um, and I, I had had a couple of attempts in the past to try and build out parallel support for pest, uh, but was unsuccessful. I think literally the, the kind of click moment and it, uh, I, I won't try and find the line again, but that line where it loads the pest tests. Mm -hmm was kind of the, the click moment because that's actually really far down the para test process if that makes sense like yeah. that's right near the end so the, the thing that kind of uh, the the moment of light for me really was when i when i stopped trying to work it from the top down and went right to the bottom and then work work yeah. back up yeah um which was was kind of the, the missing piece um and, and and then it, it kind of all just fell into place from there on out, <laughs> other than some uh, wrangling with new lines in the output <laughs> handler. Everything else was quite smooth. <laughs> and is is this like the first time that you used like that composer trick where you're not loading files but just saying like use these files which are like modified files? Yeah. Yeah. So I I I knew it was possible. I'd never done it because. If you're building like end end level applications, you don't tend to have to. Mm -hmm. um, like usually, you can just fork the original repository. Uh, but we didn't want to. We didn't want to do that. We didn't want to have to maintain a separate version of Paratest and yeah. all things like that for two files, basically. Yeah. Um, but it was Nuno. I, I had a little call with Nuno, and he was like, "Why don't we just do that?" I think he's done it on a few few little projects. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, it turns out pretty well. I mean. It, it makes a lot more sense when you've literally got two tiny things to change in that class. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, Nuno for yeah, it's it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty clever trick by by Nuno. I knew that you could do these things with Composer, but uh, or 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 separately. Like I don't want this file for any reason, but the fact that you can just replace code with this. That is like a, a very nice, nice trick to have. In my mind, I'm also thinking like this is like an argument of uh, uh, against making things final to just make things easier for others. But I don't want to go into the discussions about this because <laughs> final has a lot of other advantages. It's a little bit of preference there. But if paratests wouldn't be final, it would have been easier on you, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Saying that, if you actually look down the, the list here, you'll see this little pin next to pretty much every class in the parallel plugin, mm -hmm. which basically is just an indication of final. So pretty much every class in the para test, in the parallel plugin is final as well. Yeah, it, it, It's one of those things that... I mean, in all honesty, uh, Nuno obviously did a talk on it at, at Laracon, which it was great if you've if you've not seen it yeah, yeah i've seen it on, stat on static types static analysis yeah um and we use static analysis and php stand heavily on pest and all of the plugins are officially supported by the pest team um and you'll see not only we we at level max <laughs> yeah. but we also pull in like super max rules <laughs> so, yeah so the static analysis has never been so high um <laughs> And one of the things that it will say is, look, Use this final. class either needs to be abstract or final. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, so you end up in a, in a position where you've got to, you kind of, you you, you do it because PHP Stan is telling you to do it and yeah. it makes sense. So 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't want to push you in a, in a defending position or try to, to shame this uh, or anything. I, I do see the value of, uh, of these things. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm nitpicking a little bit on it because in this particular case, it would have been easier, but probably having final uh, for best has a lot of advantages that, uh, that you just don't want to give up. I, uh, I get that. Uh, so no shame there. Yeah. Just do whatever you think that is uh, that is uh, that is good for the project. And I think using final and static analysis certainly benefits best a lot. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's on a, it's also on a, a project by project basis. I think I think mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, well, we've only uh, commercially started using final classes and and uh, heavy static analysis in the most recent of our projects before that i was dead set against final so yeah. it's something that i've only kind of I, I guess started using and come to see the benefits of yeah when working with nuno on on pest <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's definitely on a per per project basis i think yeah um i also just swing back and forth between it actually at spasi we we've used uh final for for quite some time and then again there was some friction and we were uh, re removing the practice or not uh, not requiring the practice and right now with uh, static analysis yeah we're taking another another look at our practice i think it's good to to think about uh to keep thinking about these things and not dogmatically just stick what what you've decided but if there are like new things that are popping up like uh, for instance the quality of php stand and the, the quality of static analysis you need to just rethink your other practices as well i think uh. mm -hmm. yeah definitely it's, it's it's something you should always be uh, tweaking i think <laughs> yeah indeed Okay, Luke, uh, we're now one hour 30 in. So this was yeah. like a, a very nice uh, uh, little demo, uh, not a little, uh, a very nice demonstration uh, uh, of how that, uh, how that code works. Yeah, so, so thanks for uh, guiding me through it. And yeah, and thanks for, for having written it. Uh, it must feel good to power all of <laughs> all of those fast test suites uh, now i think you saved a lot of people a lot of time with this uh <laughs> yeah it's great to kind of have something that's uh, so readily available to use and that i guess it allows a lot of people to to justify now onboarding with pest yeah um that, that perhaps would have been a little bit reluctant to do so before uh, i I, I just want to plug something if I can before. We yeah, finish. sure. No, no problem. No problem. I, Go ahead. I was just going to say, obviously, you've kind of seen what's going on uh, in the PEST plugin. There's a lot of similar principles going on in PEST itself, and particularly around static analysis and things like that. And I think um, for me, first coming into PEST, my first contributions to PEST, I was quite reluctant and hesitant because I didn't quite understand. I'd not used static analysis all that much before. Uh, in tomorrow's Pest in Practice stream, which um, I've, I've linked to on Twitter, we're going to actually build repeat support, which we've been discussing for some time and gone back and forward with on the stream tomorrow in Pest in Practice. So if you want to see like, like how, how you can actually get started contributing to Pest, come join us tomorrow because um, I, I think there are a lot of people who would who have ideas for PEST, but just are a little bit reluctant to jump into it because they don't understand certain things. So, so come on board and, and have a look. I've also put uh, the uh, the stream in the comments uh, now, so uh, people can just click on it, set a reminder there. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not going to be able to watch live, much. but I'm probably. I'm going to watch the recording uh, after Luke. Uh, so yeah, have have fun. Thank you very much. Have fun with that. So yeah, I will do. <laughs> so I think we're at the end of the stream, unless you have something else that you'd you'd like to plug. Okay. So no, that's all good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay, uh, yeah, thanks, Luke. And yeah, see you on, uh, on Telegram and until the next stream, I'd say. And thanks all for, for watching. <laughs> Bye.
Thanks, guys. Bye. Good night. <laughs>